and mm -hmm. peace. Mm -hmm. That's right. I used to be a soprano myself. You didn't really get to know me too well after first meeting me, though you were able to tell right off the bat that I was the different soprano sibling. For one, I had absolutely no interest in following in my father's or brother's footsteps and going into a life of organized crime. But I didn't just not want to be a gangster. I didn't want to share my life with one either, which is why I married Tom. As you see, old habits die hard. Just ask my older sister Janice. I could stick this fork in your eye! Or Parvati, as she preferred until she began dating Richie April after moving back to New Jersey from Seattle. But I get it. You already know all this. Today, I'm going to talk about some of what you don't know. How did I end up like I did? In such seemingly different circumstances from my older brother and sister. Well, here goes. I was born on March 7, 1965, to Livia Soprano and Johnny Soprano. I have two older siblings, Janice and Tony. As far as my relationship with my siblings when we were growing up, I was always the quiet one who stayed out of trouble. Tony and Janice had a monopoly on trouble when it came to the children of the Soprano household. My father was the one who always got in trouble with the law, but it seems my mother struggled everywhere else. As far back as I can remember, I knew I didn't want to follow in any of their footsteps. So I buried my head in books in school and did whatever I needed to do to get far, far away as soon as I got my high school diploma. See, that's what I'm talking about. Don't get involved. Let Tony handle it. I only called you because you're far away and I thought you would want to know if your mother was ill. 180 grand he's asking for that place. Like he needs that. Well, I'm glad someone's taking charge. I think one of the more interesting aspects of all this is the fact that I come from an Italian family where, as you know, family is everything. It's not like I live across the globe or something. On the contrary, I live with my husband, Tom, and our kids in Brewster, New York, which is only about an hour and a half or so from where I grew up in New Jersey. Hello. In hey. here. Hey. Hey. Hi. Hi, sorry we're late. The Tappan Zee was a nightmare. Yeah, checking the trucks again. You may be thinking to yourself, why so cold, Barbara? Don't you have any warm, nice memories to think back to from childhood? Sure if you want to stay at the most superficial level. But if you dig any deeper, you'll see the dysfunction and the rot that was at the core of our family and our household, and from which I had to escape if I wanted any hope of a different future. Yeah, that's what's going on. Uncle June, was that really necessary? He's a goddamn hothouse flower. That's his problem. You may also be thinking to yourself, third child syndrome, Barbara, but I stand by everything I say. In fact, those typical behaviors that one often reads about with the youngest of three siblings, that's never really been me. I've never really fit neatly into stereotypes, and this was no exception. Well, you think we should do something now? All right, fine, you wanna do something? Let's just do it. Let's just stop talking. Well, did I make the right decision? Hmm, I think I'm gonna go with a hell yes. She was so awful. What do I tell my kids when their own aunt won't even come to a funeral? Take it easy, I'll handle it. I mean, every single time we bring the family together, look what happens. The first time you met me, you remember that first real conversation Janice had with me while we were sitting outside by the pool? Things could never just be. There always had to be an agenda like with Janice here. And what exactly was that agenda? Money? Yeah, I guess. But it felt even more pathological than that. Did Janice think I was that foolish to believe that she was asking all of these questions and standing up for her mother out of a genuine concern in her heart for her mother's well-being? Not that Janice owed her mother anything, but she really could have just cut the bullshit. Just be real with me. Why was that so hard? Mom's not dead yet, and there's no will. That's why it was better for me and our family to get away from the center of the Soprano universe. 
I wasn't so far away that we couldn't come down every so often, or if, God forbid, there was an emergency, but we were a safe enough distance away to not be involved in or have to hear about their day-to-day -day affairs. I don't think I could have survived dealing with all that agita day after day. But people can change, right? When Janice moved out to the West Coast and told me she was getting into Buddhism, I was actually a little optimistic. It seemed like the tenets of Buddhism could be really healthy for her, assuming she actually followed them. Richie, after all I put into getting to where I am, it'd be ridiculous to decompensate now. I, I am so not that person anymore. Spoiler alert. Not really, because you know what happens. She doesn't. After our little family barbecue, the first time you saw me, the next time I saw my siblings was at the funeral for my father-in-law. He had a horrible accident and fell off the roof while installing a satellite dish. And he had literally just retired the day before. He was an honest, hardworking man with integrity who never tried to game the system or get an unfair advantage over anyone. It's almost like the universe was playing some sort of sick joke on Tom's family. Meanwhile, at the man's funeral, it's scumbag central. He probably would have said they were unwelcome, but I guess he didn't have much of a voice at that point by the time he was laying in his coffin. I, I don't think you can smoke in here. Who's gonna complain, huh? Him? Hey, you mind? You don't mind. I think I did the right thing. It's just still hard for me to grapple with the fact that they went out to dinner that night while all that shit was going on. We'd just been to another funeral for someone else who made the mistake of going out around that time. Hopefully I'll be able to work through this, through all of us, one day. But once again, I know I sure made the right decision getting away. It may come as no surprise to you that I'm in therapy. I'm still digging through and breaking down lots of my childhood, along with my teenage years and those following, when I was trying to figure out who I was. I'm still trying to figure out who I am. What was it about me that made me different? How can I reconcile that? the reality of my family and what they did with the reality that I'm still part of that family. They're my flesh and blood. No distance can change that. If, if you had a mother that had one shred of gratitude in her, one shred, but you don't. She's taking a page from your wife's book. Oh, that is fucking outrageous. Come my last you how many fucking times to come live with us? Well, he's gone. Nice work, Ma. One big example of soprano family dysfunction? Well, how about our mother trying to kill Tony for putting her in a really nice retirement community? Well, not dramatic enough for you? What about when Tony's uncle, Junior, shoots him and almost kills him? What made that situation when Junior shot Tony even worse was that we were supposed to watch Junior that night, Tom and I. But Tom got called into work, and I had to go help the kids. And then look what happened. Do I feel guilty? Yes and no. It pained me more than words could say to see Tony lying in that hospital bed. But at the same time, we didn't cause that dysfunction. We didn't cause that household dynamic. And it also wasn't our job to stop it. That's why I moved away. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this latest video. What'd you think? Let me know.